remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again and I've got to tell you I, what I saw in the White House today speaking before the media was the pictures of a defeated man I saw Barack Obama being forced by the American people to back down and to capitulate on Obamacare and I saw Barack Obama basically saying okay 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 Fine, you, you, you can keep your health care plan that I don't like for another year. Fine! A defeated man, a man who is a failure at what was supposed to be his biggest accomplishment. Now, setting aside for just a moment the dubious legality of whether Obama actually has the power to make a decision saying, okay, fine, we can violate that law I just passed and, and you can go back to these old policies. Setting, setting that aside for just a moment and setting aside the somewhat laughable notion that an insurance company that has uh, you know, already canceled a policy of someone would suddenly now be able to say, okay, okay, we, we canceled your policy because our costs were going up, but we'll go ahead and let you back in at the rate you were already paying, even though our costs are still going up because Obamacare is still the wall of the land in a couple of years, setting that aside. It must be said that uh, it sure is tempting to spike the political football today upon seeing this capitulation from Obama. Uh, to use a metaphor that's been uh, tossed around Washington, it would be tempting to spike the political football. But I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm not going to rub his face in it. I'm not going to spike the football. Who am I kidding? I've been waiting for this for a couple of years. Of course I'm going to spike the football! <laughs> we won! You lose! And by we won, I mean the conservatives and the American people. But, as giddy as some of us are upon seeing Obama back down today, and as perhaps much pleasure as we get personally by seeing the biggest political enemy of our generation be forced to eat crow in the Oval Office, and perhaps even as, as petty as it might be to enjoy the political implosion of Barack Obama, I still think that we must put everything into perspective. What Obama did today in allowing uh, health care plans he doesn't like to be legal for another year does not actually solve the overriding problem. And make no mistake, the overriding problem that we face here with healthcare is not a dysfunctional website. The overriding problem with healthcare is not the fact that some logistics of a rollout did not work. The overriding problem is, has, and will continue to be until it is repealed the very idea of government involvement in health care at all. What you saw out of this rollout, the debacle that it was, is what happens when the government tries to intervene in an in industry when the motive of profit is set aside or minimized. Inefficiencies always sprout up. Economist Thomas Sowell wrote it uh, in one of his books that Profit is the price paid for efficiency. If you have a system in which profit is no longer the driving force, the driving motive, then you will no longer have the efficiencies you need to provide for people. This is a clear-cut case of it. And it's not like it came out of nowhere. We told you all along this was going to happen. Sure, maybe it was a website that broke down. Maybe it was some logistics that broke down. It could have been any number of things that would have happened, but it would have happened. It just happened a little bit quicker than a lot of us thought it would. Without the motivation of profit, without the motivation of money, and history shows it, you cannot expect to provide people with what they want or what they need. Period. End of story. Whether we're talking about 
healthcare, housing, food, whatever you want to name. It always works out that way. This debacle, if we on the right are intelligent about it, this debacle may be the chance to, once and for all in American history, kill off liberalism for good. In my lifetime, I have never seen a situation that is a better illustration to those who are liberals or those who are moderates or those who don't believe in the conservative cause for whatever reason. I have never seen a better illustration of why liberalism fails and why liberalism is dangerous than this Obamacare rollout gives us. This is a teachable moment for the American people. And make no mistake, when you punish a child, it does you no good if you do not tell the child why you are punishing them. If you spank a child but don't tell him what he did wrong, he doesn't learn anything and it doesn't do you any good. If you set a child in the corner but don't tell him why, you get nothing out of it. We must make sure the American people know why this happened. This happened because you went away from the free market. This happened because government decided that somebody somewhere was going to be good-hearted enough and altruistic enough to build a snazzy website that was just going to be efficient and work really well just because they were so enthusiastic about healthcare. Sorry, human beings don't react that way. Now, some good old-fashioned profit would have probably got you a good website. Good old-fashioned profit will get med medical care to those who want it and need it. Oh, wait, that's what we had before Obamacare. We had a situation in this country where people from all over the world would come here to take advantage of our health care. And they would, you know, if, if you lived in a country somewhere with socialized medicine and you couldn't get the hip replacement you wanted, you would come to America and you would put down some money and you would get your hip replacement because you could get it here. And you couldn't over there. You know, Obama in his speech and his capitulation today tried to make the case that the status quo of healthcare in this country was not working. Bullshit! It was working just fine. People could get all the health care they could pay for and at a quality better than anywhere else in the world. Nothing needed to be changed. So this is our opportunity to illustrate for the American people, those that fell for Obama, the dangers of liberalism. And it's not the only, not the only illustration of it. Look at Social Security that has put our nation in this near bankrupt financial state that we're in. Look at Lyndon Johnson's great society that has destroyed our inner cities and that has helped this nation go to a state of moral degradation and crime to which we have never seen and broken up families. It's all around you. The government cannot do health care well. And I'm not just talking about Barack Obama's government. It's easy to make this about him. It's not about him. No president, no political party of any kind can take over the health care industry and run it more efficiently and better than the free market can, period. Don't think for a second that the Republicans could have done health care any better. They could not have. So all you people that remember that compassionate conservative garbage of the 2000s and George W. Bush, go back in your hole. Big government does not work no matter who tries it. And that's the message we must have going forward. The question is, is our party, the Republican Party, do they have enough stones to actually follow through and illustrate that to the American people? Time will tell. I have a suspicion, based on the turncoat tactics of some Republicans, many Republicans, during Ted Cruz's filibuster, that an awful lot of them don't have the stones to do it. I suspect, and I hope I'm wrong, I suspect there are some Republicans out there who deep down would just love to do health care, but in a different way, because they want to be seen as the savior of the poor and, and the white knight in shining armor. Now, they'll never say it right now because to actually say that would be political suicide today, but I'm sure there's some that are out there. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that some members of the Republican Party just a few years back were troubling different kinds of health care plans on their own. Jeb Bush, a few weeks ago, introduced his health care plan, which among conservatives was about as popular as a fart in church. Remember Medicare Part D back in the Bush years, that atrocity. This new breed of conservative, 
new breed of grassroots. We don't fall for it. No. The answer is no. No health care from government. Not just from Obama. From anybody. We who are conservatives have won a battle today. No question about it. But the war is still ongoing. And that war is against the very idea of government involvement in health care, whether it's through Barack Obama or through anybody else. And in a bigger sense, the war we fight is the war on the failed idea of the social safety net that has bankrupted and corrupted this nation. The idea that government can be a facilitator and a provider, it cannot be. The 20th century is proof. We are in debt up to our eyeballs because of it. And it is time to turn our backs on the idea of government as a charity. Because when government attempts to be charitable, when government attempts to care about you, it fails every single time. The history of liberalism, when you look at it and you look at their supposed accomplishments, is always followed up by a lot of unintended consequences. Because their ideas are built in a pie-in-the-sky mentality of what they would like the world to be, what they would like human beings to be, not what human beings really are. And it's time that we illustrate, for those who do not already understand it, the fairy tale that liberals and moderates and even some Republicans have played a role in propagating for a hundred years. Now is the time. Now is the illustration we need to paint that picture for the American people. We win the battle today, but the war continues. And yes, maybe it's even a war on some members of our own party. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.